In 2005, Futurama was unceremoniously canceled for the first time, but fortunately for fans, it didn't stay dead for long. Thanks to great syndication ratings and DVD sales, the series was given new life in the form of four straight-to-DVD movies. Each movie was then split into four episodes apiece, and they broadcast those 16 episodes as an entirely new season of the show. I personally have a ton of nostalgia for all four of these movies, but to me, the first film, Bender's Big Score, introduced one of the strongest and most intriguing characters in the show's history, Lars Fillmore. Do I know you? Uh, apparently not. Hi, I'm Lars. I'm Leela. Nice to meet you. Nice to be met. Okay, admittedly, Lars Fillmore is mostly interesting because he is also everyone's favorite delivery boy, Philip J. Fry. Well, sort of. Lars is basically a time paradox duplicate of Fry, created when Fry foolishly used the time sphere to go back in time and eat slightly warmer pizza. Mmm, that pizza sure was good. Classic Fry. The idea of an alternate Fry is an interesting one, and it's actually been explored in the series before, albeit in a little bit of a different way. In the Farnsworth Parabox, we meet the Fry and Leela from Universe 1 and learn that they're actually married. There, but for the flip of a coin go we. So we know that there is a world where Fry and Leela are happy together, and our version of Fry and Leela know this themselves. But the birth of Lars basically allowed the audience to see Fry's life continue to play out in two completely different scenarios. In one, we see Fry's life continue as we would expect it to in the year 3007, and in the second one, we see Fry get to go back and actually experience everything he missed out on back in the 2000s. Although I do gotta say, I wonder if Fry's family or friends noticed that he was like seven years older than when he left. The Fry that got to spend time with his loved ones was now canonically and biologically older than his older brother. It's pretty funny to think about. So unlike Fry, Lars got to spend time with his family and with Seymour. He got his own place above Panucci's Pizza and even got a new job. But all the while, he never stopped thinking about Leela. And not just because Leela was in the future while he was in the past, but because Leela, in the future, had started dating and falling in love with someone new. A person who, ironically, ironically, was actually him. But the ways that Lars grew over the course of his time back in the 2000s was really cool to see. We knew that Leela liked Fry, but she would get fed up with his childishness and immaturity. Fry is very sweet, but he's so immature. I love his boyish charm, but I hate his childishness. And over the course of the years that this Lars version of Fry spent away, he matured. He maintained his boyish charm while also learning and growing into a more complete person. <laughs> Drink, quick, I can't balance it much longer. <laughs> Wait, I... <laughs> yes! This lines up pretty well with what we know about Fry and Leela's relationship from the original run of the series as well. In Parasite's Lost, Leela completely falls for Fry, but it's only after he's infected with parasitic worms that actually improve every single thing about him. His mental capacity, his muscles, his immune system, and yeah, his maturity. But that version of Fry was worried that Leela only loved him because of that artificial stat boost given to him by the parasites, and he opts to try and win Leela over himself. I've got a baggie of massage oil, and I'm gonna give you my super back rub just like I used to give Amy when I was going out with her, and she always seemed to uh-oh. But Lars is an older, actually matured version of Fry, and it took a lot for Fry to become Lars. It wasn't overnight. His pain and agony over Leela manifested into an obsession with a narwhal named Lee Lu. <laughs> yeah, maybe a little bit too obvious of a parallel with that naming convention, but I like the idea behind this. It was honestly an unhealthy way for Lars to deal with this grief. He basically transferred his love for Leela into love for Lee Lu, which sustained him until the day they had to release Lee Lu back into the wild. And much like with Leela, Lars wasn't able to let go of Lee Lu, going on a multi-year expedition to the North Pole to find her again. He eventually finds and captures her, only to realize that by holding on to Lee Lu, he was actually preventing her from finding her own happiness in the wild. This was an important step in his growth. His moving on from his relationship with Lee Lu also represents him finally being able to move on from his relationship with Lee La, and recognize that Lee La is truly happy with Lars. If he really loves Lee La, he has to let her go, and let her have her own happiness without him. Fortunately, he has this important moment of self-discovery at the exact right time. Bender eviscerates Fry's apartment, burning off his hair and damaging his lungs, and finalizing his transformation into Lars. I'm Lars? I'm Lars! Realizing that he himself has always been Lars, he rushes to apply cryogenics, freezes himself with Fry's ex Michelle, and emerges in 3002. Gets a job at the Head Museum, and waits for the day he knew was coming, when he would meet Leela again. Guilty as charged. It's a nice looking eye and there's plenty of it. 
Personally, I really love the buildup of Lars and Leela's relationship. In particular, this montage that showcases all of their dates. Even though on your first watch through the movie you're hurting for Fry and his potential loss of Leela, on rewatch you cannot help but enjoy how cute Lars and Leela are together. I'm a huge fan of this little moment here when they're riding in this hot air bubble. The bubble splits in two, separating Lars and Leela. Lars quickly finds a resourceful way to reconnect their two bubbles and reunite with Leela, which is honestly just a great little metaphor for what Lars had already gone through. He was separated from Leela by 1,000 years and found his way back to her. You really believe that Leela and Lars fall in love, even though it sucks to see Fry so heartbroken. You're the woman I've been waiting for all my life. Eventually, Lars asks Leela to marry him, and we see just how happy both of them are on their wedding day. Until Lars learns the devastating truth. I warned him! I warned him a time paradox duplicate is always doomed! What? Time Paradox duplicates are always doomed. Since nobody else knows that he's a Time Paradox duplicate, he calls the wedding off, for Leela's own good. The wedding is off! <gasps> this was a truly selfless act. Lars knew that he wouldn't last, and that it would eventually end in Leela's heartbreak, so he isolated himself. It was an incredibly mature decision that I can't imagine our Fry making at this point in his life. But one of the coolest things about Lars coming into Leela and Fry's life is that he actually helps propel Fry's own development and maturity forward. No. You don't understand. Lars is the only man I'll ever love. I know it in my heart. Seeing how heartbroken Leela is over Lars leads Fry to do something that took Lars 12 long years. He lets Leela go. Fry actually tries to reconnect Lars with Leela, but Leela thinks that Lars never actually loved her. Lars then does one final thing for Leela. Don't you understand, numbneck? He doesn't love me. I've always loved you. Knowing he's doomed as a Time Paradox duplicate, he sacrifices himself and saves her and Fry. One final selfless act. It's a fascinating what-if scenario for Fry that we actually got to see play out. And while his life was cut short, in the end, Lars' life was actually pretty great. He got to meet all of the people he knew and loved in the future, then he got to go back to the year 2000 and live a few more years with the people he left behind. His parents, his brother, Seymour the dog, and he even got to go back to the future and spend a few happy months with the woman he loves. You know what they say, it's better to have loved and lost than to have never loved at all. Lars got to do a lot of things that Fry never got to do, and as I mentioned before, his existence helped propel Fry's growth forward a little quicker than it might have otherwise. After the events of Bender's Big Score, despite the optimistic ending for Fry and Leela, we actually do see that Fry isn't quite as hung up on her as he was previously. In the following movie, The Beast with a Billion Backs, Fry starts dating someone new. Fry and Leela get together slowly, and while they do have a sort of on-again, off-again relationship over the course of the final revival seasons, they ultimately get an incredibly satisfying and happy ending together. Lars helped both Fry and Leela see Fry's potential, see who Fry could become. I mean, even his name is a hint that this was his role in the series. Philip J. Fry became Lars Fillmore. Phil Moore. He's Phil, but, you know, just a little more. I know she thinks I'm immature, but someday I won't be. They were kind of throwing it in our face the entire movie. I especially loved this little piece of foreshadowing in one of the musical numbers. I bet she'd love me too if I was a bald-headed kook. And while Lars ultimately is his own character, and Fry would never be exactly who Lars became, he helped Fry move forward and become a more complete person. I know for me personally, I often go over what-if scenarios in my head about forks in the road of my life. I'm sure a lot of you can relate to that. What if I could just live in two alternate realities where I live out two completely different lives? So that's what things would be like if I'd invented the thing longer. The Fry slash Lars storyline allowed us to see that play out with one of our favorite characters. And not only that, it did it in a meaningful way. It not only showed us those what-if scenarios, it brought it all back together again and propelled the character forward. Although if I'm being honest, I kind of wish it had been a storyline that somehow played out over a longer period of time than just a single movie. It's definitely my favorite aspect of Bender's Big Score, and I do think they execute the storyline well, but imagine if Leela and Lars' relationship had played out over an entire entire season, and the reveal of Lars' true identity is some sort of finale twist. I know Futurama kind of predates that style of serialized season storytelling, but a fan can dream, can't he? A man can dream. And so that's where I want to pass it off to you. Give me your thoughts on Lars Fillmore. Do you like him as a character? Did you like the direction Futurama took with the DVD movies? And which of the four movies is your favorite? Let me know down below in the comments. If you like this video, stay tuned. I seriously have too many Futurama video ideas planned. I'm trying not to become a purely Futurama channel right now, but like, damn, I'm really inspired to talk about this show. I'll try to hold off on another for at least a few weeks, so don't worry, it won't, won't get oversaturated. And don't forget to comment, like, subscribe, because it really helps me out, and I'll catch you next time. Peace. Johnny! Two challenges!